Hi, so I'm going to quickly have a look in this video at how to get deployed a Linux application when you're building and developing on Windows. So we're going to be using Rad Studio here to create our native application and we're going to be running directly from the IDE to debug it but we're going to run this out onto a Linux machine. So let's uh, first of all set up our Linux machine. So the first thing we need to do, um, I'm just here on my Windows machine, having installed Red Studio. And I'm just going to go into C program files and go down to Embarcadero Studio and go to the version of Red Studio that we're running. And in here you'll find a server called a folder called PA Server. Now the PA Server folder has in here a Linux PA Server compressed file, uh, a GZ file. First thing you need to do is you need to copy this onto your Linux machine. So for me to do that, I've literally um, dragged that onto uh, my host. I'm running a Mac machine here, um, and then just dragged it onto my Linux box. And then all I've done is I've then gone ahead and uncompressed that and put it here into a folder called PA Server 21, which is the, the name of the server for the version that I've got. So one quick note, um, if you haven't done this already, uh, worth going to docwiki.embarcadero.com and on the docwiki documentation here, if you just start typing in Linux application development, uh, you'll find the notes for this session uh, pretty much documented through this page here. Uh, one of the important things to do is to make sure that you have got your packages updated on your machine. So using terminal, uh, you can just run these commands, so you need to run uh, sudo no uh, just to make sure your apps are updated uh, and then also just to make sure that the development packages are installed. Uh, so you'll literally just copy and paste and run each of these commands and you're good to go uh, if you're using Ubuntu. If you're using Red Hat then obviously there's the, the yum group install option instead. So first thing we need to do just here is just to launch it. Um, so it should just be a case of changing directory to the folder if you put it in files uh, and then just run dot slash pa server so launch the application uh, if you want to put a password in put a password in and that will be used for connection later on and we're now up and running now if I push the i button I can see the IP address that I'm running on here which is 111138 so I'm just going to copy that and we'll use that back on our VM here. Now if this is the first time you're building a Linux application, uh, a GUI application, then what you will need to do on Red Studio is just go to Get It Package Manager and install FMX Linux. So using the search at the top here, if you literally just type in Linux, you'll be able to find FMX Linux pretty easily and um, just select it and install it. I've already installed it so um, I'm good to go. It will just take a, a couple of minutes, it's, no, it's not a very big uh, install. Uh, once that is installed you'll then be able to see in an FMX application a Linux target. So let's add to the platforms here Linux 64-bit. Now if this is the first time running you'll see it's not assigned to any connection. So there's two ways to assign it to a connection we put in our, our Linux machine. Either build it and run and it will pop it open or you can go to tools, options and, and this is especially useful if you're building out and testing on different Linux distros. You can add into the deployment connection profile manager here uh, the platform that you want. So I'm just going to call this um, Ubuntu VM and tell it that it is a Linux 64-bit VM or platform. I've pasted my IP address and then just test the connection which has succeeded which is all good my ports are open okay and save. So we can now see that it's showing me my Ubuntu VM profile is connected Now the first time you go to run an application you'll be presented with this dialog and now once it's harvested the, the SDK elements that it needs any future projects won't redo this uh, it literally is uh, 
the first time and only time that it needs to do it. It goes, oh, I don't have these files, let's pull those down. And that's exactly the same for iOS, for Mac, um, to, to set these up. Now this initial harvest can take a, a couple of minutes, um, but once it's done, let's see, that's it. So now we have the files harvested locally. We can see that's done here. Let's go ahead and close this dialog. And the compilation is just going to carry on. And now it's going to link the files locally and get the application ready to run out onto our Linux machine. So the final linking is going to happen now. So we can now see that's uh, deploying and executing across to our Linux box. So if we go across to Linux now, we can see here we are with our application. Our Hello World is working quite happily, which is great. Now, the if you want to know where this has gone on the Linux machine, in the, under PA Server, if you press S, this will bring up the Scratch directory. Uh, you can put a question mark to see a list of the different commands. But our Scratch directory here is under the home directory, PA server, we can see the scratch directory. There's then a directory for the profile of your IDE, so the, the name of the profile that you gave it in the IDE. And here is the application and all the files that have been deployed with the application. Now at this point it's just a standard application itself, so we can see we can launch that quite quickly. Um, if you wanted to, or if you have a complex application that has lots of files to deploy alongside it, then that's quite easy to manage from within the IDE. So we can just go here to Project Deployment and here you can add in specific files that you want to send or you can send specific feature files. So for example if you're wanting to have a database client then you could use interface to go uh, or the interface client here and when you run the application it will deploy any files that it needs uh, or you can just use the deploy directly from here to send those files across. So if we go back now, we can see that we now have the interface files are added to the application folder as part of the deployment. So this is a very handy way to be able to package together requirements for your application to run. Make sure you have the correct binaries and libraries that are running on your machine across to the destination machine as well. And this is the same for Windows, Mac and Linux for pushing files across on PA server. So a very, very useful uh, thing to be able to do. So just to finish off, I want to quickly do some debugging of our application on Linux. So I've just quickly modified the code underneath the button click here. So we have a variable for Hello World, just so we can see uh, and step through the different uh, parts of the code here. So let's go ahead and build and run this here. And we can see that uh, this is all kind of loading through and deploying across. When we jump into our Linux machine here, we can see our application. Now if we click on Hello World, we can see that it's stopped there because we've hit the breakpoint. Now we can now step through the code. We can inspect the values. We can put watches in. Uh, we can go through the call stack to see what's been called where and when. So we can see that the T control click and the button click and the mouse move and, and so on have all been fired through the call stack. And let's just hit run and pop back here and we can see that that's just finished through. So pretty easy to be able to step through and see what's happening from the remote machine using PA server. So that's about it from, from me. I hope you found this uh, a useful introduction to be able to run and deploy and to debug remotely on Linux. Happy coding and see you soon.